everyone. My name is Jude Dry from IndieWire, and I'm pleased to be in conversation with um, the team behind Palm Trees and Power Lines. We have director Jamie Dack and stars Lily McInerney and Jonathan Tucker today. And I'm so thrilled to be speaking with everyone. Um, congratulations, everyone, on the film. It's really quite something. Um, so, Jamie, let's just start with you. And where was the seed of the idea for this film, and how long has it been? gestating inside you. Yeah. Um, so in 2017, I made a, sh I wrote and directed a short film of the same name as this feature. Um, you know, it was quite different in scope than the feature. It was much smaller, but it was the same world and in some ways the same character. Um, and with that, I kind of just wanted to explore some of my experiences as a teenager and, um, you know, feeling, insecure and lonely and being, you know, growing up in suburbia. But even as I was making that short, I knew that I was really just beginning to touch on some of these themes that were personal to me. Almost as soon as the short premiered, I began writing this feature. And what happened when I was writing the feature was I just, I realized that as I was getting older, I started looking back on some of the relationships I had had as a teenager through a different lens. The way I viewed them was just starting to change. Um, what I thought were relationships that I was completely in control of or consciously choosing to be a part of as an adult, I was like, Hmm, you know, I'm not sure that that's exactly what was happening. So I decided to write this script, um, where Leah is kind of a proxy for my younger self as I explored, you know, what had happened to me and also what could have happened. Jonathan, what did you think when you first read the script and how did you know you were prepared to take on, you know, it's a tough role? Well, you know, I mean, one of the, one of the thrills of being an actor is getting um, to kind of watch a story move from script to production and then to kind of release it to post-production and experience it in that kind of funny place as both a viewer and a participant. Uh, I found that uh, especially acute um, with this production. And um, when I read the script, I was so rooting for this couple and then realizing you're not really supposed to root for them potentially because inherently it's not uh, the power dynamic is not morally right. And I think we get tricked so often as human beings into um, not listening to our intuition um, and trying to like intellectualize something when you know something isn't right. Um, and our bodies are so attuned um, evolutionarily uh, to knowing what is um, what's correct and what's not correct. And sometimes we are able to listen to that. And sometimes we kind of outs outsmart ourselves. So I, I was really attracted to that um, kind of play that Jamie was presenting in the story. I didn't quite appreciate how challenging um, some of the work was going to be on the day and nor how challenging it would be to then watch it. But Lily, um, you know, was such a, an open beautiful uh, person and artist and character. And, in, and, and she literally took my hand on the first day and kind of allowed me to feel like it was going to be safe, both like on set um, and for us as characters. And Jamie, um, of course, created one of the more uh, wonderful sets I've ever been on and, and uh, really looked after us. I just wanted to say I felt the same way. Um, I don't know how I could have taken on a role of this intensity and a subject matter that's so close to heart if it weren't for having such a comfortable environment on set and such supportive relationships with Jonathan and, and Jamie as well. Um, it was a really open, uh, trusting and supportive environment to work in. Otherwise, I don't, I'm not sure how I would have felt going to some of these places, especially as an actor. Amy, how did you how did you create that environment? I mean, I imagine it starts even with casting too, right? Knowing that these two people were the right people and would would be willing to go there, but then, you know, further along in the process, yeah, how did you keep the environment safe as you were shooting? Yeah, I worked with an awesome casting director, Kate, Kate Antonini, um, and one of the reasons why I wanted to work with Kate was because 
she's so great at, you know, finding these kind of fresh faces and these new, exciting actors. And um, I knew that I wanted that. I actually knew that I wanted... So I, I wanted Leah to feel like a real teenager. I didn't want people watching the film and going like, oh, there's so-and-so playing this teenage girl. I wanted people to get lost in the film. And so anyways, Kate uh, had discovered Lily years before. And as she says, was saving her for the right, you know, showed me the tape. And uh, you know, it, we just, we, we saw a ton of tapes, but there was nobody but Lily, really. Um, and on the other hand, I really wanted to pair that character with a very experienced actor. I thought that that was gonna uh, lend itself to the power dynamics that are just in the script. I thought it would be really easy to find an actor in their thirties, like a, a guy in their thirties, it's not gonna be hard at all. But when I really started to, when I really began the casting process, I actually realized it was kind of challenging because I was looking for something really specific. I needed this charm and charisma. And as you saw in your first few minutes of talking to Jonathan, he's one of the most charismatic people I've ever met, but I also needed this person to be able, you know, there's a darkness to him. There's these other things going on under the surface. And I had seen Jonathan do that in some of his other roles and I knew he was capable and willing to go there. So uh, that was kind of the, the, how I cast these two people. You know, it was like, I just wanted everyone to be really comfortable with one another. So it was like, it was FaceTimes together and getting meals together. Jonathan and Lily going off on their own to do uh, an acting session together and and then some sessions with the three of us. Um, but honestly, it was, it was like us just texting and laughing and becoming comfortable. And, and, and I'll also say that you know, we did, we had a very open conversation. Like the three of us had a conversation. Like we're about to go make this movie that has very sensitive subject matter. We all need to be on the same page. We all need to be comfortable. We all need to speak up if something's not, you know, like it was just, it was open lines of communication and, and everyone felt really safe, myself included. I'm curious about those, that rehearsal process, uh, Jonathan and Lily, what was that like? Those sort of, what happened in those side sidebars? Tucker, do you want to talk about our animal work? Uh, you know, again, the, 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 the relationship between Tom and Leah really soars when it feels like they're connected to each other without the, um, the, when they're a team protecting themselves from the outside world. Uh, but of course, you know, we're intellectually capable of understanding um, Lily and I, the, uh, of what's actually really happening. Um, and we know how the whole film, uh, the story is scored. So to kind of find ourselves um, and put ourselves in a place where we could be wholly vulnerable with one another, a lot like some sort of a, almost like a camp, summer camp relationship or some like a romanticized high school relationship or something. Um, you know, we were able, as, as Jamie said, to have all these sort of devices from fun text threads and meals and things like that. And, and then some very transparent conversations about how, you know, my concerns particularly as being really the only male on this film in this role, in this position, in my sense of discomfort, kind of on the day, I hadn't anticipated um, I don't, for some reason uh, how uh, vulnerable I was going to feel, um, which is ironic considering you know, the, the person who really should be fearing vulnerable, uh, but was so immensely courageous from the jump was both Jamie and Lily. But we, 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 one of the fun things that Lily and I did was uh, we went and um, did some sort of like movement uh, animal sort of work. Um, and that kind of made us feel so stupid uh, in front of one another that it broke down a lot of the sort of barriers that are inherent when two actors meet in the, in these sorts of stories. Again, you know, to Jamie's credit, casting Lily and to Lily's credit as a human being and as an artist, um, because the film really belongs to, to them and to the producer, Leah um, Chen Baker, these three incredible women putting together this um, potent story. Lily's work is 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 remarkable um, in the movie that you got to see and, and getting to be a witness to that literally as close as I was. I mean, how many people have the ability to have that proximity to a performance? I'm closer than the cameraman is. Um, it was such a, a, a thrill and she was willing to jump from from the get 
Um, and that's just such a rarity amongst people in general, but particularly in a sort of heightened level of storytelling like this. Thank you so much, Tucker. That means so much to me. You should just settle in onto these, uh, Lily, because you're going to be going through a few days of them. So you should just, just go. So Lily, this is one of your, this is your first uh, screen roll or? Yeah, I, yeah, I was walking in really, really cold, but um, I had studied acting from when I was a little kid and all of my earlier experience was just in theater, like school theater. So um, it was certainly diving in the deep end as far as um, my first professional credit goes, but it was such an incredible opportunity and such an incredible learning experience along the way that any kind of reservations or anxieties about taking on that massive responsibility sort of disappeared as soon as the cameras were rolling. And like I said, Jonathan is such an amazing scene partner. And I learned so much just through watching his performance and watching his demeanor on set. And um, I feel really, really lucky to have had the past that I did as scene partners and teammates. Jonathan, specifically for you, um, who are your mentors? Who has inspired you to do the work that you do? And what's the greatest lesson um, they've taught you? You know, it sounds like a really funny answer, um, but you just, one of the privileges of being an actor is you're so interested in storytelling and you find it and you see it everywhere and everybody has something to offer um, when you really dig into who they are and what their experiences have been in life. So, you know, I, the, 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 the privilege here for, has been getting to go into all these different environments and worlds and subcultures and getting to sit down and get access to such a diverse group of people and hearing them share, you know, who they are and what they've done. And that's the thing that really is the most inspiring because the, the person doing construction sometimes has, you know, the most interesting story that day. And the guy uh, who's going to be breaking up some company and bankrupting, um, you know, a, a family owned business might also next week have something uh, extraordinarily compelling. So, I mean, I guess just being open to kind of the, the stories of the world has been the thing that's inspired me the most. And, and I never know where that's derived from. What's a moment where you saw the ability of movies and film to bring people and communities together? I guess this would just go to like my earliest experiences watching movies with my entire family. We were a big like movie nights family. And that was the first time that I saw my father cry and my mother cry. And just, I really witnessed these um, sort of like uncrackable figures feel so much, not that they're, you know, not incredibly sensitive and tender and emotional beings, but I would say just the way movies brought my family together and moved us as a unit and brought us all this shared catharsis and excitement and, and conversation for the following days was probably my earliest memory of just um, the power of film and knowing that it's something I wanted to do forever. Uh, Jamie, who are some of your filmmaking influences? I love Lynn Ramsey. Uh, seeing some of her short films when I was um, in undergrad and then seeing her, you know, starting with Ratcatcher, those were some of the films that really made me think like, oh my God, this is a female filmmaker and these are so interesting and unique and artfully done. This is a funny one because Jonathan, as we all know, was a teenage boy in Virgin Suicides, but you know, Sofia Coppola was also, a, some of her films really influenced me as well. Um, you know, Virgin Suicides, Lost in Translation, even Somewhere. I mean, I could go on and on and on, you know, in, in college, I studied film history and we, you know, I studied a lot of um, international films, you know, so French New Wave, um, Wong Kar Wai, I love, you know, so many. I could just take it from. Well, I guess to hone in, I mean, with this film specifically, um, were there any sort of inspiration, you know, things that you felt inspired by or I mean, I know. 
it feels very current to me, very contemporary. And there's definitely a wave of women filmmakers making tough stories like this and doing them really well. I mean, never, rarely, sometimes always comes to mind with the look even of this film. There are certain things. Yeah. um, To be honest, this film, like, sure, I always watch films and I'm always uh, gathering inspiration from them, but that was not, it wasn't any particular films that inspired me in this way. Um, I'm a photographer as well. And so for a few years, I had been taking a series of 35 millimeter film photographs in Southern California. And that was actually how the short, the genesis of the short and then the feature. And um, it was almost as if I had been location scouting for years, not really knowing it. Um, And my cinematographer and I really looked to those images and, you know, that inspired me and my own personal experiences that I really just felt this need to express and tell a story about. Yeah. And there's a lot of interesting shots and angles to a lot of like, the girls are like lying down looking at their phones and you have sort of like, I was noticing a lot of kind of unexpected um, setups. I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah. One of my um, secret or not so secret dreams is to make a film one day where every shot um, feels like a photograph. Like for example, Ida or Cold War, I feel you could press pause on those films and you could print any still from that film and, frame it as a photograph on your wall. Um, So again, being a photographer, that's something I really want to do. That wasn't possible here, um, given the tight schedule and our limitations, but I tried to do that as much as I could. And, and my DP and I tried to, you know, we went in being like thoughtfully composed frames. That was our, our goal. So thank you. And then, you know, and then the story and, and the script is also so great. I mean, there's plenty of photographers who turn to filmmaking and make something that just looks really good, but isn't as compelling. So, you know, you really have it all in this. Um, I want to emphasize, I guess, how did the, this, this, the writing process come together for you? And did you have any apprehension about sort of making that transition? No, I was always a writer as well um, from a young age, in addition to taking photographs. And yeah, so but the but so with this particular project, I had so I made the short and I had been writing many drafts of the feature, but it wasn't exactly where I wanted it to be. I um, it had the world and it had the, you know, a lot of this, like the scenes with the teenagers, which was inspired by a group of teenage boys I hung out with. And it, you know, it had some of Tom and Leah's relationship, but there was something missing for me in their relationship that I wanted to go deeper with. And I had never written with someone else before. I, I typically write alone, but I decided that for this particular project, I wanted to explore that. Um, and so I brought on a co-writer to write the, we wrote many more drafts together, um, Audrey Finlay and, and yeah, it was an, it was an awesome experience to collaborate in that way. And just, she and I have very different styles, um, as writers. And I found it to be really helpful to, to get the script to what it ended up being. I'm curious for Jonathan and Lily, how did you think about sort of the evolution of the relationship? You know, we, we witnessed kind of from meeting to this very, you know, sort of imposing ending. Um, did you discuss sort of, did you shoot in order? Did you discuss sort of how the intimacy would shift as they got to know each other better? We didn't actually shoot all of the scenes in order. I think we did as much as we could, but Um, that was a challenging component, having to shoot certain scenes that come later in the film where we are incredibly intimate and then sort of rewind the clock and um, reset and remember that we haven't really reached that level of intimacy quite yet at this point in the narrative. So that was an interesting challenge for me as an actor um, and one that I had never really had to deal with just working in theater before this um, and with a consecutive storyline through. Uh, I mean, look, j- j- this might be Lily's um, first performance and it's, it's um, Jamie's first feature, but Jamie is, um, I mean, but both of these women are like, they've made so many movies before this and some other um, past life. Jamie was, um, you know, had so much responsibility here from composing shots um, to making sure that the dialogue was working to handling all of the problems that, that come with making a tiny budget film. Um, 
managing personalities and all sorts of, you know, all the, all the joy of independent filmmaking. Um, but she also was able to find ways in which to calibrate um, the on set and, and in scene um uh, relationship between me and Lily or Tom and Leah. And she was, uh, Jamie was incredibly um, sensitive to that in terms of the evolution and where we were on the day. Um, but also in terms of how uh, she was seeing the film in post-production in her mind on the day in production. So uh, extraordinary amount of credit to, to Jamie. And there were a handful of times when like, she would come in and tweak something. It just wasn't quite working to her or um, the temperature wasn't exactly right. And it's that sort of confidence that you really only see in kind of the very best directors um, that are working today. Oftentimes, I think people from the outside can think that there's some sense of, they can misplace, misunderstand, or think that a sense of confidence is somehow um, a sense of arrogance. And um, that never came across um, with Jamie. It was just this, uh, um, you know, this uh, deep rooted understanding that she knows what she's doing and everybody around her feels that way. Um, so the fact that when the film was cut together and it really works as a movie, like no one's really all that surprised. They're like, of course, you know, this woman's been, um, we felt the, this from this filmmaker. And I think what's, what's personally thrilling is to have been there at the, at the jump, both with Lily and with Jamie, because I think, you know, these two people are going to go off to do some pretty extraordinary things. I think we can all agree on that. Um, thanks for wrap, summing that up so well, Jonathan. Um, that's our time. Thank you all so much. Thanks, and Jude. congratulations on the film, really. It's truly a, a huge accomplishment. 